Last week, I presented at the Orange County Gay Conference on using student choice in the 5E model, how to empower your students to take ownership of their learning. Now, that whole entire session was an hour long, but I realized that an hour long video is way too long and teachers don't have time for that. So instead, I'm gonna break it up into five videos, a five part mini series. We're gonna start with an overview of the 5E model, going over just basically what it's about and its purpose. Then we'll get into why student choice is important and how it can benefit our students. And finally, we'll go into three of the five phases and how you can infuse student choice into those three different phases. Hi, I'm Christy. I'm a middle school science teacher with over 25 years experience in the classroom. And I love helping teachers empower their students to take ownership of their learning. Let's go ahead and get started. In this five part mini series of the student choice in the 5E model, we're gonna start with an overview of the 5E model. Now the 5E model centers around students discovering the information through inquiry investigations and then processing their learning and applying it. The teacher becomes more of a coach and facilitator instead of the giver of information as they guide the students through the discovery process. Now with this, the activities are student centered, allowing them to build a solid foundation of the scientific concept. And these students are the ones that are doing the heavy lifting as they engage in the investigations designed for learning and understanding instead of just memorizing facts. The 5E model has five different phases, and although they can be done in different orders, typically we start off with the engage phase. Now this is where you're gonna pique the student's interest and discover what they already know about the topic. This is a way to hook the students, and many times this is done through some type of phenomenon, and it takes only about five, 10 minutes. You don't wanna spend a whole class period on this. It should really just be an introduction activity for them. Then we get into the explore phase. Now this is where the students can take time to work through answering some of their questions that they got through the engage phase. The key concepts here are identified and the teacher provides inquiry activities that are student based for students to develop a hypothesis, test the hypothesis and start drawing their own conclusions about the information in the topic. After the explore phase, we go into the explain phase. Now, this is where you're gonna allow the students to first express their own explanations that they developed during that explore phase. And then you're gonna introduce the scientific and technical aspects of the topic. So it's a way to clarify any misconceptions, but you do want the students to be able to express what they've already discovered on their own and the conclusions that they might have drawn during that engage and explore phase. After they explain, they should have a pretty good foundation now of the topic and it's time to elaborate and extend their learning. The students here, take their understanding from the previous lessons and they apply it to closely related but new situations. Now these activities should be challenging but achievable for the students. We want to stretch them beyond their comfort zone but we don't want them to get so frustrated that they give up. So this is a time to take their learning and stretch their thinking a little bit, providing support, but we do want them to go beyond what they already know. And then finally, we wrap it all up and evaluate. Now, it should be noted that evaluations should be happening throughout the whole entire 5E process. You should be doing formative assessments during the whole entire time, checking in on the students, seeing what they're doing. This evaluate is about the end of the unit and students should be given an opportunity to explain what they know and understand 
along with being provided a performance assessment based on the activities that they have been working on throughout that whole entire unit. You can do an end of the unit test, like a multiple choice test, but that should not be the only assessment. You really want them to apply their understanding and really show you what they can do and reflect on their learning. So that is the 5E model, a basic overview of it. For more resources, head to adventuresinism.com slash 5E underscore resources for a lot more information to help you implement the 5E model. Thank you for watching another Adventures in iSTEM and Beyond video. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for more Adventures in iSTEM and Beyond videos. For more ideas on how to incorporate science, technology, and skills for life into your classroom, go to adventuresinistem.com.